Okay, are we ready? Lights, ready? camera, action. Lights, camera. It's my moment, it's my five minutes of fame. Literally five minutes, because that's like how long these videos are. And welcome to Mental Health Monday, where we talk about advocacy, resources, and ending the stigma associated with mental health. I am your host, Amanda, back again for this week's topic, which is childhood trauma. Now this week, we are gonna kind of delve into childhood trauma and how it impacts us. And then with the next video, next Monday, we will talk about how you can actually help yourself heal and cope through childhood trauma if you've experienced it. Now, you may have heard, oh, it happened in the past, just get over it a lot in your life. Well, I know I have. Very stigmatizing language that we have to deal with as childhood trauma survivors. However, childhood trauma is something that impacts us across a lifetime. It's really, really hard for individuals who struggle with childhood trauma to just get over it or leave it in the past. Because when you experience childhood trauma for a long period of time, it can actually change the way that our brains and bodies function. Now, when you are a child and you go through a prolonged period of toxic stress, it can change the way that your body and your brain develops. A lot of times when you are a child and you go through that toxic stress, your body has to develop around that toxic stress. Whether that be living with a parent who had a mental illness, moving a lot, experiencing childhood sexual abuse, living in an abusive household. All of these things can constitute as childhood trauma and they really, really affect not only our bodies physically, but our minds mentally. Our bodies are wired for survival. So when we're a child, if we're constantly looking to our caregivers to give us something that we are not receiving, it can really impact development into adulthood. Now, the thing about childhood trauma symptoms in adulthood is they look very similarly symptomatic to other mental illnesses. When we experience childhood trauma, our bodies and our minds wire us for that survival. And in wiring us for that survival, we then develop symptoms or coping tactics that carry on with us into adulthood. Now, a lot of these coping tactics and a lot of these ways that our bodies develop to survive look a lot like other mental health issues, whether that be anxiety, hypervigilance, social anxiety, paranoia, visceral full body flashbacks that may feel like a panic attack and things like depression, mood swings, emotional dysregulation, abandonment wounds, all of these things can tie into childhood trauma. So it's really important when searching for a therapist or talking to your care team that they are trauma informed if trauma is something that you are struggling with. Now you can go back to our videos like CPTSD versus PTSD and suppression versus repression to learn more about the way that childhood trauma can impact us and what symptomatically it can lead to. But it's really, really, really important that you meet yourself where you're at and you understand understand the way that your past has impacted your present. June is actually National Childhood Trauma Awareness Month here in Cincinnati. So we wanted to make this video to raise awareness about childhood trauma and how much it can impact us. If you go back to our ACEs video on adverse childhood experiences, you can learn a lot more about how childhood impacts us physically as well. The effects of childhood trauma can follow us. Depending on what you experienced in your childhood and what kind of trauma you experienced, it can really, really impact not only your interpersonal relationships, but your romantic relationships, your work life, and even your your environment. But do remember, this is not the end all be all. The great things about our brains are that they have something called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity basically means we can help ourselves rewire our brains to get to a more regulated leveled state. Now I'm not gonna speak too much on neuroplasticity because I'm not an expert, so go research it yourself if you want more information on that. But that's why things like mindfulness and gratitude and emotional regulation and self-awareness are so, so, so important when working through your childhood trauma. And it's also really important to put into perspective that memories in our bodies are not only stored in our minds as pictures, but in our bodies as feelings. That's why sometimes when we get into a situation, we feel a certain type of way and we don't know why. We get triggered, but sometimes we don't know why or we can't remember why. It's because our body is re-remembering that trauma that the picture hasn't necessarily attached to. And that's okay. It's all about getting the right tools, getting the right coping tactics, and becoming self-aware to know how you can deal with those situations when they do come up and when you do get triggered. So it's really, really hard to just leave the past in the past or get over it when our bodies physically remember everything. We will link some helpful books down below if you wanna learn more about childhood trauma and how they impact you physically and how you can heal. 
This is why it's so, so, so important that we take care of our kids when they experience hardships, trauma, toxic stress of any kind, because it's so important to be proactive, because children are resilient, but they shouldn't have to be. If we heal at the source and we heal after the fact, we are more likely to have better outcomes in adulthood. Now, this is not to say that in adulthood you can't heal, because you definitely can, but we have to support our children. Thank you for joining us for this Mental Health Monday. Join us next Monday where we talk about coping through childhood trauma. Bye.